Hello guys. So uh, um, in today's video, I would like us to look at partial fraction decomposition. Now, um, if we are given two algebraic expressions, which have been joined together like this, adding them put under the same LCM gives us this algebraic expression right here. Now, the reverse process that is moving from this side to this side is what we call partial fraction decomposition, basically breaking this down into its simpler form. This is what we call partial fraction decomposition. Now, in order to resolve to partial, the numerator all the time must be at least one degree less than the denominator. As you can see here, we have our value of x being raised to power one and here x is raised to power two. So in order for us to resolve, the value of x here has to be less than the value of x down in the denominator. If we have something like this, x squared minus x minus two over four x minus five. In order for us to resolve this into its partial, we first of all have to carry out long division, long division so that we get some polynomial and a proper fraction, which we can now resolve into partial. Now, there are three types of partial fractions. Those whose denominators contain linear factors, and this is how they are resolved. So this, are, this is the example. This is how we resolve the ones with linear factors in the denominator. The ones with repeated linear factors in the denominator, example, this is how we resolve them. And the ones with quadratic factors in the denominator, that is the denominator does not factorize. You first of all have to check if the quadratic uh, factors can be factorized well and good. But if not, if factorizing them will lead to probably getting some sad or imaginary numbers, then we resolve them as quadratic factors. And this is how we resolve them. Now let's take up an example. If we're given such an example, so the first thing is check is the degree of x in the numerator less than the degree of x in the denominator? Yes. Then we move on into resolving. Now, the denominator, as we can see here, is quadratic. However, we can be able to factorize it. So I have x squared minus 2x minus 3. We can be able to factorize this into x minus 1 and x minus 1 and x plus three, x plus three. So I am going to write it into its linear factors first, then resolve. So I'll have 11 minus three x over x squared minus two x minus three can be written as 11 minus three x over x minus one x plus three. Clearly the denominator is linear. So how do we resolve a linear denominator? This is how we resolve a linear denominator. So coming back here, I will have this being resolved as a over x minus one plus b over x plus three. So this is how this is supposed to be expressed in, into its partial form. So what remains is for us to get values of a and b, which satisfy this equation. Now I will put this under the same LCM and compare it to this other side. So under the same LCM, I'll have X minus one, X plus three. This goes here, I have A, X plus three plus B. This goes here, I have X minus one. On this other side, I have 11 minus three X over X minus one, X plus three. Now. I will choose random values of x, which will help us solve this equation. Now, since we have two unknowns, I'm going to choose two random values of x. So the first time I'm going to say, let x be equal to, let's say one, replace these values in the numerator because the denominator is already equal on both sides. So replacing in the numerator, I will have 11 minus three into one. So that is 11 minus three, which will give me eight. This is equal to replacing one here, I will have 4a. Replacing one here, I will have zero. So this gives me a equals two. Let x be equal to, I will choose minus three for convenience sake. 
So replacing minus three in the numerator here, I will have 11 plus nine, and that will give me 20. Replacing minus three here, this will give me zero. Replacing minus three here, this will give me minus four B. So what is the value of B here? The value of B is minus five. Hence, we already have our values of B. As I said earlier, resolving into partial involves us writing this into this form. So since we have the values of A and B, our answer becomes A, which is two over X minus one plus B, which is minus five over X plus three. And that is it in its partial. Let's take up another example. So if we have something like this, so the first thing always check the degree of X in the numerator and the denominator, the degree of X here, X raised to power one, the highest degree of X here, X raised to power three. So it is proper. We can continue to resolve into its partial. Now look at the denominator. How do we express this into its partial? Come back to the table here. That is a repeated linear factor. And this is how it is expressed into its partial form. So coming back to our example, we are going to open this up as A over X minus two plus B over X minus two squared plus C over X minus two cubed. So uh, the same procedure we put under the same LCM. This is how we're supposed to open, write this into partial. So we're going to look for values of A, B, and C, which satisfy this equation. So I'm going to put them under the same LCM and the LCM is X minus two cubed. So how many times does this go here? So I will have A and X minus two squared plus B. How many times does this go here? X minus two plus C. How many times does this, does this go here? I have one. This is supposed to be equal to two X plus three over X minus two cubed. As we can see, the denominators are already equal. So I'm just going to compare the numerators. Now, since we have three unknowns, I am going to choose three random values of X. So let X be equal to, I will choose two for convenience sake. So two, I have, this will give me four plus three, and that is seven. If I replace two here, this will give me zero. If I replace two here, this will give me zero again. So I remain with C is equal to seven. Choosing another value of X, let X be equal to, so let's say zero. For X is equal to zero, what are the values on the numerator? So this we will remain with three, putting zero here, zero minus two minus two squared, that will give four A, putting, zero here that will give minus two so minus two times b that will be minus two b plus c so this gives us an equation since you already know the value for c we can just replace it here and have three is equal to four a minus two b plus seven so this gives four a minus two b bringing seven to this other side of the equation it will be minus seven plus three which will give minus four so we can call this equation one. Okay, the last value of X, let X be equal to, let's say one. So if X is equal to one, what is the numerator going to be? So two times one plus three, that will give us five. This is equal to putting one here, I have minus one squared, it should give me one. So I will have A, replacing one here, I will have minus one which will give me minus b plus c we already know the value of c so replacing it there we will have a minus b is equal to c7 so minus 7 plus 5 which will give minus 2 call this equation 2 now we have two equations here we can solve them to get the value of a and b so from this equation make a the subject of the formula so a will be equal to um minus 2 plus b, minus two plus b. Replace this value of a in this equation right here. So what does that give? So that will give, replacing that value we will have, so we have minus four is equal to four into the value of a is minus two plus b. 
minus 2b. Solving this, open the brackets, you have minus 4 is equal to minus 8 plus 4b minus 2b. So this and this gives us 2b, which is equal to bringing this to the other side, we have 8 minus 4 gives 4. So what is the value of b? b is equal to 2. So we already have our answers because resolving into partial, this is what we're supposed to get. So writing it with the constants now replaced, I have a and also our value of a, or oh, we can get the value of a because you say a is equal to minus two plus b. So we have this as minus two plus the value of b is two. So our a is equal to zero. So our A is equal to zero. So replacing the values up there, I will have my equation now being, sorry. So my equation now being zero over x minus two plus, what's the value of b? The value of b is two over x minus two squared plus c. What is the value of c? Seven over x minus two cubed. Seven over x minus two cubed. And that is basically, how we resolve that into its partial. So yeah, that's basically how we resolve that into its partial. So we can just have the final answer as this two because the first one is just going to be a zero. Yep, 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 yep. yep. So um, what if we have one that has um, a quadratic denominator? So um, how exactly do we go uh, on to open that up. So let's look up an example with um, a denominator which is uh, quadratic. So let's say we have something like this. We have, so example number three, we have seven x squared plus five x plus 13, all this divided by x squared plus two, x plus one. Now, first of all, we check, um, we check uh, the power of x. As we can see, the highest power of x here is x raised to power two. And here we have x raised to power two. If we are to open this up, this will be x raised to power three. So clearly the degree of x in the numerator is less than that in the denominator. So we can go on and resolve. Now let's look at the denominator. Looking at this here, this right here is quadratic. This right here is linear. So how are we going to open this up? Here we have two cases. So this is how we are going to open it up. For the quadratic part, remember how we open quadratic factors. So ax plus b. So for the quadratic part, we will have ax plus b, all this divided by x squared plus two. Plus for the linear part, we will have c over x plus one. So that's it. Resolving this into its partial, this is what we're going to have. So let's go on and put under the same LCM, then look for values of a, b, c, which satisfy this equation. So putting this under the same LCM, I have x squared plus two and then x plus one. So what does this give? I have, uh, this goes here, I have a, x plus, B multiplied with X plus one. Plus, see how many times does this go here? X squared plus two. This is supposed to be equal to this side, which is seven X squared plus five X plus 13. All this divided by X squared plus two X plus one. So I'm going to look for um, values of A, B, C, which satisfy this equation. The denominator, are equal. So I'm just going to compare the numerator. Since I have three unknowns, I'm going to choose three random values of x. So let x be equal to, so let's see, I can say let x be equal to minus one for convenience sake. 
So if x is equal to minus one, what are the values in the numerator? Minus one squared, that will give me seven minus five plus 13. Okay. Uh -huh. This is equal to minus one here will give me a zero. So the whole of this would be zero. Minus one squared will give me one. So one plus two, that will give me three C. So evaluating this side, seven plus uh, 13, 20. So this will give me 15 is equal to three C. So the value of C here is five. Let's choose another value of X. Let X be equal to, so let's see, I can choose the value of X as zero. So for X is equal to zero, replacing here, I will have zero, zero, then I remain with 13 on this side, is equal to for X is zero here and zero here, I will have that as B. B. For X is zero there, I will have plus C. Since I already know the value of C, I can replace it here and I have my B being equal to, so uh, 13 minus five, 13 minus five, and that will give me B is equal to eight. So B is equal to eight. Okay, let's choose another value of X. Let X be equal to, let's say one. So if X is equal to one, replacing the values here, we have seven plus five plus 13. So we have seven plus five plus 13. This is equal to replacing the values with one here. We have A plus B. So uh, A plus B multiplied with two. So that will be two A plus two B. Okay, plus replacing the values with one here, one squared, that will give three, so plus three C. So what does this give? This gives 25 is equal to two A plus two B plus two C, but we already know the value for B, so this will give 16, plus we know the value for C, which is five, this will give 15. So what is two A? So two A will be um, 25 minus 15, so that will give 10 and then 10 minus 16, that will give minus six. So we have this here as minus six. So what is the value of A then? Then the value of A will be minus three. So now we already have our answers. We just go back and uh, remember this expression for resolving into partial and write our answers for A, B, C. So A is minus three X plus the value of B is eight all this divided by x squared plus two, plus what's the value of c? c is five over x plus one. So basically that's how you resolve into partial. That's how we resolve into partial. What if you have an example whereby um, the value um, of x, the degree of x in the, um, numerator is more than the degree of X in the denominator or the degree in the numerator and the degree in the denominator are equal. How do you go about that? Because we first of all have to carry out long division before we resolve. So let's say we have something like X squared plus nine X plus eight, all this divided by X squared plus x minus six. So as you can see, the degree of x here and the one here is the same. So we have to first of all divide this before we resolve. So we will divide x squared plus nine x plus eight. This is divided by x squared plus x minus six. So what gives us minus six? So what gives us x squared here is one. So we have that as zero, one. So Actually, that will give, if you're multiplying by one here, this gives x squared plus x. So that is zero, subtracting this two, this will give me eight x plus eight. Now I need this to go away, so I will have to, um, I need to get eight x there. So what do I do? I am going to, so basically, uh, if, if, if you look at this now, we don't really need to go, on and divide further, because if you look at this, this is the same as 
one plus eight x plus eight over x squared plus x minus six. So clearly now we've already broken it down and uh, you can see the degree of x here is less than the degree of x here. Then you can go on and resolve this. So you look at this, it is quadratic, but can we be able to write it into its linear factor? If yes, then we go on, write it into its linear factors and resolve. So um, that's the end of this session, guys.